Like, even though you're filming it. Mm, too there we go. Yeah. Okay. This even though you're hard. filming it and like people are watching it, they still don't, like they're not there, so they still don't understand it. So it's like this isn't making any of this sense. Whoa. <laughs> so filming it. <laughs> Some people afraid of cameras. Are you afraid of cameras? No. Okay. Does it make you nervous? Mm -mm. Okay. Why do some people get nervous? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> don't know. And no guesses. What if you guessed? Uh. Seems like. Uh, it, it, I don't know. It takes away, well, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Can you play the same thing that we had before? Remember that? Try, try it again. transcend it will so far transcend their previous existence by the creation of these new types of technologies that like that type of technology will just become as commonplace as the book in the future and it's that'll be only be a single thing mm -hmm. and that so in the future it'll be so different like people will be able to not die just because medicine has gone that far right. or will we'll cure aging or like this dream thing or there's a million like artificial general artificial intelligence is not an outpop well, I had to program a computer to have intelligence and not just run commands, but to think and learn. Right. But that's transhumanism. So I meet these guys, and it turns out that they've camped like 45 minutes away, and they've, they've walked all the way over here. They walk over here every day to the conference from 45 minutes away to the campsite. And I'm like, you guys want to stay in my room? Yeah. And, and so they're, they're like, really? And I said, yeah, okay. So they moved in. So for the rest of the days, they moved in, and it was really cool. And he ended up telling me about the uh, best hypothesis I've heard of for why we have dreams, and this fits in too. As it turns out, what your head is doing is it's running, it runs fearful scenarios so that you have practice at acting, at responding to the scenario, so that if it were to actually happen, that you've got, you've got, you've inherited a certain number of like template scenarios that you've already been practicing at 
all the time you've been sleeping. So you're not wasting that time. Right. You're 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 living in a pretend reality. So you so your instincts can teach your learning. Right. And the more trauma that you experience through it, the more likely you are to have it. And so that's why you're remaining with it. No, but just it's so strange. Like, I don't understand. Like oh, it's just. But the ooh ooh, ooh. this is good. I used to have dreams like that, and I ended up completely overcoming all of them. And uh, that's that was my introduction to lucid dreaming. When I would have a dream like that, if I broke into lucidity, then uh, it would, you know, all that pain would stop because I knew, I overwhelmingly knew this was this was, this was it's just a dream. Yeah, and I could do whatever I wanted, and usually. You know, and make, doing some kind of action that is defiant will further prove to yourself that you are lucid, kind of. Mm-hmm. You know, just like, you know, treating the M&M guys and, I don't, I don't know, you know, or like, just, the idea is you overstep the structure of the dream. You do something unexpected, something different, right. that ruins the plan of the dream. Kind of like Inception. You know, somebody comes in here, starts shooting people, the the thing is they've run through this scenario in their head a thousand times before doing it it's become this obsessive fantasy to them it's not like you wake up with the guns in it, you think about it for a long time before doing it you you it feels good and you you know you plan out everything only if that only if people respond in a completely different way than your fantasy worked out will that dream be crushed It'll, it'll, it'll fall apart. So, if, if anybody would have the courage to alter the course of his dream, that's how you would alter it from its, from its goal. You know, its goal being basically to kill everybody and kill yourself. Or to get away if you're really cool. But you have, you have, to, you have to collapse the dream of the person that's shooting.
got it twice. First time, incredible. Incredible. Okay, second time? Second time, it was, it was whack. It, I mean, I felt something, but it wasn't nearly okay. this all- uh, It was handled improperly. That I just had, you know, okay. I just, you know, just created all these epiphanies and, you know, these thought processes, these new worlds that I encountered that I never thought I would have that really changed my perception of reality of the world. Nonetheless, no matter what doctor, no matter what anyone says, that first experience was monumental to my perception of reality. What was that? Because it gave me a, a secondary truth that turned into my primary perspective. It turned into me realizing these things that everyone else overlooks, like the beauty in everyone else and everything. How quickly so many other people are just so fast to just pass it by as if they themselves are just a passerby, but to me I was captivated in literally every molecule of every fiber of every being of everything was just this phenomenal thing that I could never I could never reproduce how do you explain that I I can't and that's why it's so mysteriously beautiful to me and this was years ago that I took it and I still feel the exact same way But I, I think differently because of that night. The people I surrounded myself with, a good environment, and the product was remarkable. <laughs> it was fun. It was amazing. So are you going to do acid with me? You said a bunch of times today, I don't need drugs. Well, I don't know, because I was meaning like, because you kept saying my pupils are big, and then oh, everybody okay, says okay. my pupils are big, because they don't they, think I'm they high. They just naturally I'm... are. Spend one third of your life sleeping. How much of that do you remember? You spend two thirds of your life awake. How much do you really remember? It's beautiful. The experience of your life evaporates as it passes through you, and you only truly remember it when you see it again. People think that they forget their dreams because when they wake up they can see them evaporate, but what they don't see is that they've forgotten their entire lives. And if they can make no commitment to remembering themselves, they too will be forgotten. <laughs>